What's going on Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. I'm back. Well, you know, kind of back. Back in voice. But I'm still here. You know, still me. So I thought I'll try something different. You know, this format. Right, so let me know how you uh, feel about this format that I'm just testing out. Whether it's good or I should just go back to, you know, normal, you know, video where you actually see me and I'm talking and expressing myself. So yeah, so right now I want to talk about the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, the ending. Right, so this is going to be like a review slash in-depth look at the ending, what it means and the theories that I have about the ending and its implications for the future right because at the moment all we can do is you know have theories because there's some things we can't possibly know until it actually comes out from the developers mouths or in the next game so what I want to talk about first is how I felt about the ending I love that ending I loved how they've changed things up because when you look at Final Fantasy 7 the original one didn't have a really good ending you know pretty much the whole game was a bad ending we lost Zack at the beginning of the game Aerith dies we did save Earth from um, Meteor right the human race did not survive we got a bad ending guys, right? So I'm happy that they are redoing the whole game uh, in a new, more in-depth look, an in-depth perspective of the events of Final Fantasy VII. I love it, right? But there is one main aspect that I am on board for this ending. There's just one thing that makes me say yes to everything. And that is to save her. I'll do anything to save Aerith. Anything. When I lost her, we all lost her in seven. I was pissed. I was pissed. I didn't like it at all. That made me irritated me it upset me it made me angry right when i first got the game and i played it and i got up to that part and then she died i thought i'd done something wrong so i actually tried to go back to my last save and my last save i was pissed it was like 20 hours ago right where i was still in the slums i was like gosh damn it but I went back and I did it again. And I got the same ending. The same thing happened to Aerith when she dies to Sephiroth. I was pissed. And then I actually reset my whole game. And I played again. And I played everything methodically. I went through everything with a fine tooth comb to make sure I wasn't making no mistakes or I was trying to pick the best option possible if you could pick an option which I don't think you could but I was killing every monster I was killing every boss as quickly as possible with high health I always make sure that Aerith was on high health her MP was high everything she still died I actually stopped playing Final Fantasy 7 the original for I think it was almost a year actually I stopped playing that game when she died because I, I hated it it made me so it made me so angry and this was before the proliferation of the internet yeah so you didn't have a site that you could go to or information where you could talk to people about the ending or if there was something hidden in the game or secrets or puzzles or how to get this how to get that no that did not exist when Final Fantasy 7 came out right all right so that's basically me that is my reasoning for why i'm so happy that they are redoing final fantasy 7 remake like it's a pretty much a whole new game 
All right. So, without any further delay, let's get into it. We're going to talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake, the ending. Now, we're going to talk from the perspective of the moment they get to the bridge, right? Because that is where everything changed, right? And it's a part that has significant meaning to me, actually. Because in the original Final Fantasy VII, when I got to the bridge, I was actually stuck there for weeks. I was stuck on there for, I think it was maybe over, maybe a month or two months actually. I was actually stuck because I didn't know what to do. When you get to the bridge and then you see everybody, Nanaki, Barrett, Tifa, Cloud, Aerith, everybody. I think there was something where you walked around and spoke to everybody and asked them, what do you do next? And everybody was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. What do you think we should do? I couldn't see where to go. And I was stuck on that part. I thought the game disc had glitched. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I stopped playing the game. I played it periodically to try to get to that part, past that part. Couldn't get past it. I actually went out and bought a new copy of the game and I tried to play it and it didn't work so I was like I must be doing something wrong or this game is just completely busted then in itself but then so one day I played it randomly and I just happened to run into a corner I don't know how I did it or just hold a direction and run that corner and it, it actually changed the location and I was like what and that's how i found out how to actually get out of that area right so that bridge has a lot of significance to me the symbolism of being lost and not know where to go and then just the endless abyss of freedom but no concept of where to go and what to do. I felt that in Final Fantasy VII. So that's why getting to the bridge and the next part of this game after that is the unknown. It's, it's beautiful to me. It's beautiful. It's very poetic. Yeah. So the thing that changed was when Sephiroth, he comes to the edge of the bridge. That never happened before. And he talks about destiny, right? Now I think it's very important to look at the words that he says. What is destiny? Destiny is what's meant to be. An inescapable fate. There's no avoiding destiny. It's going to happen no matter what. That's destiny, man. And so powerful is the alteration of events and Sephiroth's presence. And he states his clear intent to change destiny. I mean, who wouldn't? When you know your destiny is to fail and die. I mean, I'd want to mix things up also, you know, I guess. But so powerful is the distortion that he's created in the flow of destined events that it sends ripples through time and space and distorts the events going all the way back to Zack's final stand against um, the, it's the antithesis of Final Fantasy VII. The destiny of the beginning of Final Fantasy VII. I love it. I'm that guy. I'm pissed Zack died to the Shinra army. He lost to guns and sheer exhaustion. So the fact, you know, that they're changing the past, you know, or it, whether it's the past or an ultimate reality or timeline, look, I'm cool. If I get to see Zack alive again, let's go. Let's do it. And that's um, and and that that's that's when the um, orbiters of fate go crazy, and they try to stop um, them from going any further. 
but then Sephiroth cuts a rift in the arbiters of, t of um, fate, Vortex, showing us, you know, that he wants to defy his destiny. His destiny of sheer failure. And he actually even invites Cloud to come and change destiny as well. And that's crazy. Because, you know, at this point, Cloud and Sephiroth, they want the same thing. And that is, um, you know, Aeris power, you know. Uh, Iflana, she gave her materia. I think it was like the holy materia, right? You know, I don't know whether how they're doing it in this this uh, version of Final Fantasy VII, whether it's her power or whether it's the holy materia or her mother's power or whatever, you know. She uses that to purify the rift that Sephiroth uh, created in the Arbiters of Time uh, vortex that they're using to try to block them uh, from going forward, you know. And it's just crazy that um, Cloud and Sephiroth actually have got you know the same intention you know they both want the same thing you know you've never seen that or imagined that in a final fantasy and then even when cloud is going to go through the actual rift you know to go after separate Aerith stops him you know and then she says to cloud this is destiny's crossroads yeah, and we already talked about destiny. You know, destiny is what's meant to be. It's in an, it's an inescapable event. It's an inescapable fate. You cannot avoid destiny, no matter what. Now, when she says destiny's crossroads, I want to put that into context as well. Because this is massive. Crossroads, the definition. In folklore, magic... And mythology, crossroads may represent a location between the worlds. And as such, it is like um, a site where supernatural spirits can be contacted and paranormal events can take place symbolically. It's very important that it can take place symbolically. It can mean locality where two realms touch... And therefore, it represents a place literally neither here nor there, you know. And this is why they're able to have such an incredible battle with no collateral damage, you know. And, it, and it, it's basically defining the future. It's, it's twisting fate, you know, which is nothing new to Final Fantasy. We've seen it before in Final Fantasy, uh, what is it, 13? With lightning, we've seen it in Kingdom Hearts many times. So we know Square Enix, they like to mess with destiny. You know, we've even seen a uh, strange twisting of events and fate in Final Fantasy X. You know, so we're used to, we should be used to this by now, you know. I mean, this is just, it's beyond my wildest imagination. You know, I, could, I, I couldn't ask for more. You know, I couldn't even remotely imagine this was going to happen. It's exhilarating. They turned a simple scenario into an absolutely incredible feat of astonishing wonder. I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm ready, man. Let's go. You know, and when you reach the other side of the singularity, there's a distortion that tries to attack you. You know, and they say, you know, Barrett says that that's the collection of the whispers and it becomes an arbiter of fate. And distortion gains form, right? And I, my interpretation of that distortion is Final Fantasy VII. And our knowledge of Final Fantasy VII, our memories, trying to stop the new memories the new events of, from taking place it's the original events of final fantasy 7 taken form and trying to stop the new final fantasy 7 from trying to deviate from the course that that world already has and they just call it the arbiters of fate and the arbiters of fate those whispers that is me 
and your memory of what's supposed to happen. Like, for example, when we're in the church, you know, and then you saw Aerith was about to die. You know, they saved Aerith because Aerith was meant to die. She was going to die there, but she never died. So the whisperer, the whis we were like, no, that didn't happen. She never, she never died there. Whisperers um, actually save her. Same thing like you look at um, Jesse. You know, when Jesse was never meant to take over from Cloud, but she was going to take over Cloud's place in bombing the reactor. The Arbiters of Fate made it so that Jessie was injured and she wasn't able to participate in that the next bombing mission which meant Cloud was able to go into a bombing mission things were able to proceed as normal you know same thing like when um, Sephiroth stabbed Barrett you could see like when he stabbed him there was no blood you just saw like smoke that's when the Arbiters of Fate must have went into Barrett and then protected Barrett because Barrett was not meant to die. So the Arbiters of Fate is our memories and the power of Final Fantasy VII saying, no, 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 you cannot veer off course. We know what's supposed to happen. But some things, this new Final Fantasy, they're powerful, so they're defying twisted fate. It's godlike. It's godlike. I love this. You know, when you fight the first boss, you know, and um, you two have a sword. I believe that is a manifestation of cloud. You know, you even read it. If you actually do the, <coughs> what are they? The assess material to look at the information of monsters and demons or bosses that you're fighting. It will actually tell you information about the bosses that you're fighting or the enemies that you're fighting and this one it does make a reference to um this whisper or this yeah this whisper is actually using a sword to protect its future you know a manifestation right and then when you kill it you see images of the fire fan up fire fantasy 7 you know where you saw humanity did not survive no humans were about, no cities were about. You just saw Manaki running with his kids to the top of a mountain cliff, right? You know, humanity didn't make it. You know, when you fight another boss, which is, I believe, is the manifestation of Barrett, right? You see, like, another flashback, you know, of the Earth getting hit by Meteor. And then when you fight uh, Bahamut, you know, that's, that fight was godlike, by the way. Right, pretty tough in hard mode, yeah, but still godlike. You know, you see the fight between Cloud and Sephiroth, like the conclusion of when um, Sephiroth took Cloud into that vortex, into like some mad area, some ominous area, and him and Sephiroth fought and Cloud defeated him. You know, and then also, you know, you see the visions of Aerith's death. You know, and that is the main reason why I am happy, as I said in the beginning, why I'm happy that this game is taking it in a new direction. Because if there is even the slightest opportunity that we could save Aerith, I want it. I need it. Bad. Bad. I want to save Aerith. I do not live, want to live for another generation where Aerith dies. I don't want it. I don't want it. Right, and then you fight Sephiroth, and that fight is godlike. And first of all, I will say, if you played it in normal, it's not Sephiroth. If you played it in classic, that's not Sephiroth. You need to have played that game in hard mode. That's when you fight the real Sephiroth. That's when Sephiroth shows up, and he goes in. That fight is godlike. That is the best fight done ever in a boss fight best boss fight ever better than even which i can which i can't believe i'm gonna say it but it's how i feel it's better than anything any boss fight that platinum games has done yeah i said it when you fight a boss that is human size it is extraordinarily difficult to make that boss fight challenging and good. They made that boss fight challenging and good. 
it's until I got that buff fight, I never really understand how you fought that game, how you used the system in that game. Because after I finished the game in normal, I went straight away to fight Sephiroth again in hard mode. And he taught me everything that I thought I knew was good, was not good. I was playing terrible. And then once I beat him, and I did manage to beat him, right? It took me about a day and another play session, right? Because I played him a whole day, yeah, on a Saturday. And I could not defeat him. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Could not do it. I must have played for him like about, well, put it this way. The whole day I spent fighting him. Over 12 hours, couldn't beat him. Then the next day, when I woke up, I fought him and I beat him. One go. Because I think I slept on the information. I kind of understood it. Because I was trying to rely, rely on materia. And I was just disappointed that I couldn't use items. And then it came to me that you beat Sephiroth with skill. You have to know each of his phases. Every phase, you have to know how much life he has, how much life he's about to have, how much, when to save your limit breaks, what uh, abilities to use, how to stop him, how to stay out of his way, and how to utilise your whole team. He taught me how to play that game. It's unbelievable how godlike that fight was. And I love how when you're fighting, if you, it depends on what team you have. Your team will jump in at certain points. And there will be a cutscene depending on who is in your team. If you have Barrett there, Barrett will come in and then Tiff will come in. They will have their own separate cutscenes. If you have Aerith there, Aerith will come in and then Barrett will come in. Or you can have Tiffa. Tiff will come in and then Aerith will come in. So it depends on your team and what order you put them in and how they will come. It's really good like. It's so good. And I love how they it kind of mix you know, cutscenes with the combat and QTEs with the combat. It's unbelievable. That fight was just everything I ever dreamed that fight to be. Fighting Sephiroth. I never dreamed it could be so good, man. This this is the Sephiroth I've dreamt about. This is the Sephiroth fight. The Cloud versus Sephiroth is massive. It's a big deal, you know. It's a big deal to have Sephiroth versus Cloud. Those are the two, one of the two most iconic characters in media history. Everybody, even if you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, you know about Cloud, you know about Sephiroth, you know about the rivalry between those two. You know, it's just unbelievable. You know, and when you see Cloud, you know, fighting against Sephiroth, and you see the combat in the, the cutscenes, and it matches in the actual gameplay, like the gameplay system. Because I'll be honest with you, um, I see why you can't use items. At first, I didn't like it. I was like, why would, why can I still get items if I can't use them? You don't need items. Items make the game really easy. And if you want to have an enjoyable, challenging time where you are that team, you want to feel the struggle and you want to feel the growth. Can't play it in uh, normal and you can't use items. Because you can heal yourself. You don't need to have items or magic to heal yourself. You know, the only f you to protect yourself against status effects. You don't need to have uh, you don't really you need to use materia. You can use materia uh, configurations to protect yourself from status effects. So you don't need to use items. You know, you just have to play smart and you get your HP back at the beginning of every single chapter. And when it comes to magic points, you smash barrels. You smash those little crates. And you can get a um, little MP back if you do have to use MP. But MP is not required. So I understand it. I didn't get it at first. But I got it in the end. And the game is godlike, man. As I said, the set prof fight is one of the greatest fights I've ever experienced in my whole life. They surpassed Advent Children. Free! Free! They soared past Advent Children. They blitzed past the original Final Fantasy VII. Right, it's just incredible. The only thing that they need to still 
Pass is the summons and the abilities. Because you got to remember, this game, you never had stuff like My Final Heaven for Tifa. You know? You never had Honorary Slash with Cloud. You know, but you've got, you've got incredible shit. Like, you've got Tag Team Supers in that game. You know, which is godlike. You know, you've got, like, something crazy. You actually see the teamwork. Like, when you fight against Sephiroth, you feel it's a Cloud versus Sephiroth fight. But then you see and feel to tip the scales in Cloud's favour, we need the team. And you saw it in that boss fight and it worked. Aerith, Barrett, Tifa, Nanaki, we all contributed to that battle. And it helped Cloud take down Sephiroth. It's incredible, man. Unreal. You know, I mean, the end of our fantasy, you know, it, that that's you and me. You know, that instant where Cloud comes through the portal and he fights Sephiroth and he's at that ending. That's the original Final Fantasy, yeah? The ending. And they skipped all of that and went straight to it. Because now it's different, you know? And that's why when Cloud was there... He was holding his head and he was like having like a flashback. And that's basically you and me remembering, wait a second, this this is the ending. You know, this is the ending of Final Fantasy 7. How is it happening here? Because Sephiroth used his last remaining strength to take Cloud to that location. Instead of defending himself, right? He had to bring Cloud there because that wasn't the actual Sephiroth. You know, you never saw Sephiroth in this whole fight, in this whole game. He was using the Sephiroth clones, basically, as a conduit to bring a form of manifestation of himself to the world. But he was never ever there. That's the reason in this game you never get full power. As you were godlike in the original Final Fantasy 7. Because you're not meant to be. Not yet. We've still got a long ways to go. And he actually defeats Cloud. In that moment. When he knows. Cloud is going to strike him down. He's seen this before. So he does the counter. To that instant where Cloud would have defeated him from the events of the original story or timeline or alternate reality whatever it is of Final Fantasy 7 and that's when he says to Cloud 7 seconds that's all the time you have you may be quick enough but what will you do with it 100% he's talking about um, Aerith 100% Percent. He's referring to that instant when he kills Aerith. I don't know why he says seven seconds, right? But maybe that's the time it takes between his sword coming down to impaling her. And so that's the time Cloud has to decide what's he going to do. Is he going to jump in the way? Can he deflect it? Or does he take the stab? Or does he... What does he do? I don't know, right? But... That moment is godlike. At the edge of creation. And he says to him seven seconds. Because everybody knows that has played the original. That moment. When he stabs Aerith. Life changing for a generation. I'm excited. The um, current Final Fantasy 7 remake world, and he said the original 7 Final Fantasy 7 world will collide. And then he said, I will not end. You know, which means he refuses his ending in Final Fantasy 7. He is defying his destiny to die. And he also said he will not let Cloud end, which I don't really know what that means because Cloud didn't end. You know, he died like normal people do. Although we never saw his ending. All we know is that humanity never made it. You know. 
and then even Cloud Awesome, where are we? It says we're at the edge of creation. This is, I'm the real set prof. This is where I have been all this time watching you guys. You know, this is unreal. And you know, as Cloud is about to hold his head, he actually grabs Cloud's hand. You know, man, that was just too godlike for me. And then he said, Be careful now. That which lies ahead does not yet exist. To the that that is a more evidence which I already knew, but it's just more evidence that Setproth knows about the events of Final Fantasy VII, the original. He knows way too much. So does Erif. I don't know how much Erif knows, but I do know Erif is aware of some of the events, or she has a feeling about. What is taking place in Final Fantasy 7 and the Final Fantasy 7 remake? But Setprof just knows everything. He is on point and cognizant of everything that is going on. You know, um, I mean, yeah, as I said, man, it's just it's just incredible, man. You know, it, the, the fact that Setprof here says to Cloud, let's des let's defy destiny together. Let's stand together. This is madness. I mean, it's true. They do have the same motives, you know, to defy destiny. But what is pushing Cloud forward is to stop Sephiroth from altering, from destroying the world, you know, and trying to end it all. And Sephiroth, his motivation is to defy destiny, to save himself, you know, from death as well as you know in the world you know and to be honest with you when he, uh, he said to cloud he held out his hand he said you know come with me let's defy destiny together cloud hesitated for a split second you know and that was part of him was going to actually take set prof's hand and in that moment i thought to myself oh, fuck it take his hand cloud I'll, I'll take his hand no 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 i don't know you know, uh, what would you have done? I don't know. Because at, at that moment, I've got to admit, I was conflicted. I didn't know what to do. I, I, I feel like I could have made the mistake. I could have taken his hand and then regretted it. Or I don't know. It's unbelievable. This set prof is a set prof I've dreamt of. I always knew this was the type of guy set prof was. The manipulating, conniving, uh, methodical manipulative evil cruel sadistic he can make even though his way is the evil and the horrible way he can still make his way seem like it has a good reasoning and it's the correct way or it is the only way i love this i love it the fact that he's not just an all-out fighter or just i uh, want to destroy the world and kill everybody ha <laughs> ha you know it's amazing how they make the character so deep you know you don't know what he's thinking what he's doing what his intention is it's beautiful you're always guessing with set prof and i love how even though i've known this character for over 20 years i'm still trying to figure him out and i'm still trying to figure everything out it's amazing it's beautiful you know uh, and that's when you see cloud and set prof you know, they have a fight. And that fight was godlike with that music playing. Unbelievable. They went too far. They went too far. And the fact that they had that music playing. That music is called Listen to the Cries of the Planet. It's an original track from Final Fantasy VII. I love that track. I love that track because of the significance that that track, when that track was playing in Final Fantasy VII, man, it was just too powerful. It was too powerful, man. This whole ending, the, the, the reason it's taking me so long is because I couldn't pause the ending, but it was a lot to take in, right? And it was very, very overwhelming to see my characters that I've known for years and I have loved moving, <laughs> talking, face expressions. I'm getting to know these guys. The changing of events, 
the music it was absolutely killing me i was loving it but it was mentally draining it was absolutely and i was trying to be i was amazed but i was still trying to absorb what was going on you know i was still trying to make sense of the events so that i wasn't losing anything in that in the in the moment so it was just so it was fantastic it was unbelievable watching that and then just listening to that music and see a set prof say i will not end and i will not have you end it was just i just loved every second more than words can ever express you know you know then the fact that you saw you know <coughs> in the ending of final fantasy 7 it was I don't know, should I talk about the characters? So one thing I would say that is really good, right, is because I'm going to talk about this in the main review, right, but it's the fact that Biggs and Wedge, right, they were in the game. And they made Biggs and Wedge godlike. I mean, Biggs and Wedge are always godlike, but they did justice to those characters. Man. What can you say? What can you say? It's just incredible to me. You know, I'm so happy that I managed to get this game and this game is out. You know, the fact that it's a bit weird that Biggs survived, actually. You know, Biggs survived and Wedge died. You know, I mean, we'll see. We'll see the final ending, right, in the next game. But I don't fully know. But I do believe... You know, Wedge is dead. That's what it looked like, right? And Wedge was godlike. Biggs, Wedge, you know, everybody, Jesse, godlike characters. You know, and, and I think what was really deep about the game with, um, let's say, Jesse, for example, was the fact that she, in the ending, she died believing that it was her fault with the reactor. She used too much explosives. Her storyline, she never found out that it was it was Shinra. She never found out it wasn't her. So she went to her grave knowing that she's responsible for the disaster that happened in Midgar. That's deep. That's deep, man. And no one else knows. Nobody knows in the whole um, avalanche. Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, Biggs never knew. Wedge, um, well, Biggs doesn't know. Wedge would never know because he's dead, right? It's just incredible. It's absolutely amazing. You know, and I like the bit where you saw they actually showed the Turks and Rufus Shinra. And they actually showed the world from their perspective. Man, that's what's so good about this game. Yeah, it's the fact that they showed the world... And the perspectives of the events that was happening from other people's perspectives. Not just the perspectives of the main cast of Final Fantasy VII. Man, that's awesome. You know, and you get to see um, the Turks as well, right? And they showed the Turks as... How do you explain the Turks? It just seemed like... They weren't completely full of shit, but they work for Shinra. And end of the day, orders is orders. And they have to follow orders. And you could see it because certain times, like when, I think you saw like when it was close to the ending, right? They were hesitant, right? When it came to like actually doing what needed to be done. They hesitated, but they were still like, oh, whatever. We got to do what we got to do. You know, man, it was so good. So good. Um, yeah, and then you got to see, like, for example, when um, um, Hedgar, yeah, he came to Rufus and he said, Vice President. And Rufus didn't respond for him. But then when uh, Seng came and said, Mr. President, Rufus was like, that's right. Right, and then he went. 
that was godlike. Just those little bits of character is is godlike, man. You know, it, it just brings out more of the story, more of the lore of this fantastic world from different perspectives of everybody that is part in this incredible journey. You know, it emphasizes their motivations and it actually explores them as well. So we get to know who they are as characters, you know. And another thing that was, I think was really cool, it's like a little bit of a nod to um, Far Fantasy before this one, Far Fantasy 15. Right, is you saw when Rufus sat in the chair, his father's chair, he did like the Noctus, Noctus pose, essentially sitting on the throne of Shinra, and then he did like the little, the, yeah, as I said, the Noctus pose, it was, it was godlike, man, so yeah, I mean, I loved the ending, yeah, I loved everything that happened in it, but this is just the beginning, you know? Because you got to remember, a lot is coming. We got Genova coming. We got the weapons. We got a mad ride coming. We got Seprof. We got the backstory to look into. Cloud's backstory to get into. Look, man, this is literally just the beginning. We're scratching the surface here, warriors. Scratching the surface. So, um, yeah, that's all I really want to do. I want to say thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about Final Fantasy. And uh, take care, stay blessed and catch you soon.